السلام علیکم ناظرین آج بھی ہم پی آئی اے کے المناک حادثے ہی کی بات کریں گے وہ جو کہ عید سے بالکل پہلے طیارہ گر کر تباہ ہو گیا کراچی میں اور اتنی قیمتی جانے جو ہیں وہ چلی گئی ہیں اور ابھی تک سوالات جنم لے رہے ہیں اور بہت سی باتیں ہو رہی ہیں میڈیا میں بھی سوشل میڈیا پہ بھی اور بہت سی ایسی تھیری سامنے آ رہی ہیں جو کہ نان ایکسپرٹس کی طرف سے ہیں تو آج مجھے جوائن کیا ہے ہمارے اس پینل پر دو بہت ہی ایویشن کے انتوزیاس ہیں معین عباسی صاحب ہیں جو کہ پینتیس سال سے ایویشن کو فالو کر رہے ہیں اور بہت سارے ایویشن گروپس کے ممبر بھی ہیں اور کو ایڈمن ہے فلائٹ وائز ایک ایویشن ریلیٹڈ گروپ ہے آن فیس بک اور دوسرے ہمارے ساتھ جنہوں نے جوائن کیا ہے وہ ہیں شاہ جی حسین یہ میکینیکل انجینئر ہیں اور کراچی میں ہی بیسڈ ہیں اور یہ ایک بہت زبردست پیج چلاتے ہیں پلین اسپاٹرز پاکستان آپ نے دیکھا بھی ہوگا اور اس کے علاوہ ان کا ٹیکنیکل جو ہے ایشوز کے اوپر بھی بہت عبور ہے تو میں بنا کسی تاخیر کے آگے بڑھوں گا اور ان دونوں مہمان حضرات سے سوال کرتا ہوں تو سب سے پہلے معین صاحب میں آپ سے پوچھوں گا کہ یہ جو واقعہ ہوا ہے یہ اس کے پائلٹ جو تھے اس تیارے کے ان کے اوپر بہت ذمہ داری ڈالی جا رہی ہے جو پہلے پی آئی اے کے چیئرمین کا بیان بھی تھا ان کی ویڈیو بھی تھی اس میں بھی اس طرح کا اشارہ کیا گیا اور پھر ہم نے دیکھا کہ پائلٹ کے والد نے ایک پریس کانفرنس بھی کی انہوں نے کہا کہ ابھی انکوائری بھی نہیں ہوئی ان کے بیٹے کو جو ہے خام خواہ میں دھکیلا جا رہا ہے وہ تو بڑے زبردست قسم کے اسٹار پائلٹ تھے اور ان کو خود پی آئی اے نے ایکنالج کیا تھا تو آپ اس کے بارے میں کیا کہیں گے کہ جو ابھی تک فیکٹ سب سامنے آئے ہیں اگرچہ انکوائری جاری ہے تو آپ کو کیا لگ رہا ہے ایز این ایویشن ایکسپرٹ ویل رضا صاحب بفور آئی بگن وٹ ایور آئی سی ٹو یو وٹ ایور آئی ٹیل یو اینڈ آئی تھنک دیٹ گوز فار شاہ جی ایز ویل از ود آؤٹ پریجڈس اینڈ ایز فار ایز دا پائلٹ از کنسرن اٹس پرفیکٹلی نیچرل یو نو دیٹ ہز فیملی ول کم ٹو یو نو ڈیفینڈ ہم اینڈ ناٹ I try to make it look like that he was blameless in this. It, it's a perfectly natural thing, you know, and uh, usually in such situations, the first, all the fingers point towards the pilot because he was the man in charge. He was controlling his ship. What went wrong? What happened? He has all the answers. Unfortunately, here, he's not here to defend himself. He's not here to defend himself. So all we can do is... based right now before we get the official report all we can do is base our opinions on conjecture and probabilities and you know uh, on whatever that has been presented to us so far right now we can only base our opinions on that until the official report comes out and it's just um, you know it, it's a it's a perfectly you know uh, typical situation that you know that uh, families of this of the, the of the pilots both of them that they will you know they will obviously not in any way want any blame to come to come on the pilots shoulders because you know it's a it's a it's enough of a shock that they have lost them and that what has happened that's right. so they, they just don't they just don't want this on they just don't want this as well so that's something to be expected it's something to be expected it's an it's a natural you know thing that would hmm. happen تو جو ایئر ایئر ٹریفک کا جو رول ہے اس میں آئی مین ڈونٹ یو تھنک دے آلسو ہیو آئی مین دے شوڈ ہیو گائیڈیڈ دا پائلٹ اینڈ یس جی بیکاز سی دا ٹرانسکرپٹ دیٹ وی ہیو ہرڈ دا ریکارڈنگز وی ہیو ہرڈ رائٹ ناؤ شاہ جی کین کریکٹ می ایف آئی ایم رانگ بٹ دا ریکارڈنگز وی ہیو ہرڈ رائٹ ناؤ ور بٹوین دا پائلٹ اینڈ اپروچ کنٹرول شاہ جی از دیٹ کریکٹ یس دیٹ از کریکٹ سو بیسکلی جو ایئر ٹریفک کنٹرول کا ایک پورا سسٹم ہوتا ہے اٹس ویری ویل کوڈینیٹڈ امنگس آل کنٹرولر سو دیر از اے گراؤنڈ کنٹرولر ہو کنٹرولس موومنٹس آن دا گراؤنڈ دیر از اے ٹاور کنٹرولر ہو کنٹرولس آل ڈپارچرس اینڈ اروائولس ان ٹو اینڈ آؤٹ آف این ایئر روم ایئرپورٹ اینڈ دین دیر از این اپروچ کنٹرولر دیٹ ایکچولی کنٹرولس دا ایئر اسپیس اراؤنڈ دا دا ایئرپورٹ بیسکلی دیٹ گائڈس پلینس ان انٹل دا فائنل اپروچ اینڈ دین دیر از اے لیکن ہو کیا رہا تھا آپ یہ ذرا بتائیے نا لوگوں کو تاکہ پتا لگے کہ جو ان کے درمیان گفتگو ہو رہی تھی پائلٹ اور ایئر ٹریفک کے تو وہ اس میں کیا سامنے آیا اور کیا اس میں مسئلہ ہے 
तो कहानी हमारी शुरू होती है व्हेन द पायलट सेज दैट इट वाज द फर्स्ट ऑफिसर दैट वाज एक्चुअली ऑन द कम्युनिकेशन सो दैट मींस द कैप्टन वाज फ्लाइंग द प्लेन दैट मींस द एट दे रिपोर्टेड एट 5 माइल्स आउट दे वर एट 3500 फीट uh which is actually a bit high for the approach into karachi so if ek uh, charts ki website hai which is called jepson charts which actually publishes all pr- uh, procedures for la- arrivals and departures out of a, uh, of an airport so when you look at the chart it says at 5 miles out you have to be at 1680 feet 1680 feet so they were actually at 3500 feet the atc tried to vector them around vector means uh, they were trying to guide them around okay. to lose excess altitude so they could come back to the profile but uh, the crew uh, were adamant that they were uh, established on the ils the ils is the automatic landing system the instrument landing system which guides planes in so on hearing the insistence of the crew he cleared them to land on runway 25 left of uh, jinnah international airport karachi right right or uh, bilkul to continue please so the plane came in and uh, the, the, uh, the plane eventually called after about 2 3 minutes for a go around a go around means that the uh, plane has aborted its approach it has uh, applied full power and it has taken off again there was no mention of any sort of problems with the plane with either with the landing gear or any any sort of problem they just went around and then uh, the next communication with the approach was to turn him back around for the next landing so he was cleared to 3000 feet on heading 110 which is sort of an east bound heading an east uh, southeast bound and then he was uh, to be brought back in for a landing and something happened during that time period which caused the airplane to actually crash just 1.3 km short of the run right right तो मोइन साहब वो जो कह रहे हैं कि इंजन जो हैं वो नीचे से लग गए थे और शायद उनमें उनकी वो वहां से कुछ लीक हो रहा था मैंने ऐसी चीजें सोशल मीडिया पे देख रहा हूँ तो आप कहाँ तक ये समझते हैं कि ये ऐसा हो रहा है था वेल द मार्क्स ऑन द रनवे आर डेड गिव अवे राइट दो those markings are there they're not tire marks at all they're too spaced too far apart and uh, that part of the engine uska jo bottom portion hai that is where a lot of uh, very uh, intricate uh, sort of you know controls and pipes and high lines run through right. and they have transmission gearbox uh, assembly also under there so when he when he see he the the engines hit the runway about two to three times first left right both together right you know like that he was uh, uh, he was seesawing left and right on the runway you know tipping uh, the you know uh, the engines were hitting each side to usme jo impact jo tha i mean it was not extremely severe but wo jo niche the bottom portion of the engines are basically it's just a very thin metal cowling door right so which was obviously not meant to be dragged along concrete at 200 knots so you know that bo sara jo hai wo that was that got you know burnt out and those those lines were damaged severely damaged by the pressure and the and the heat and the dragging all of so usme the hydraulic lines started leaking and uh, possibly a fuel supply to the engines was uh, compromised also so you know it was it's, it's a very critical part of the engine right there at the bottom right 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 although personally speaking i don't know why they designed the engines in a way where they put those components right there because in the situation of a belly landing that will you know cause you know a lot of damage they could easily you know move them sideways or whatever but that's a different story but usme you know the, the like i said the markings are 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 there fairly obvious and again the once he lifted off the gradual the gradual the fading of the engines the losing of power the you know the way that I, it was it was uh, it it was just an a disaster waiting to happen because you know the engines would not if he had fuel the engines were normal functioning normally they would not the engines don't just die out and stop on you right. there has to be some, something has to have happened to them you know to make them to stop them from functioning and it will had to be nothing else but direct contact with the impact with the runway which caused okay. that damage 
बिल्कुल दैट टेक्स मी टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट अबाउट द स्टेट ऑफ द पीआईए फ्लीट सो यू सी आई मीन व्हाट एवर यू आर सेइंग अबाउट द अबाउट द इंजन्स एंड द कोलिजन यू नो द द फैमिलीज ऑफ द डिसीज्ड दे वुड बी सीकिंग जस्टिस राइट सो दे वांट टू नो हु इज रिस्पांसिबल यू नो अल्टीमेटली ऑफ कोर्स एन इंक्वायरी विल डिटरमिन दैट you know i lost my dear childhood friend in this plane crash and that's why i'm following it up and so many of my friends have lost their family members their friends so is the is pia keeping its plane in good shape that's my question to both of you given the circumstances you could say that the engineering department who this falls under yes they're doing their best okay. they're doing their best and i've uh, i know सेवरल एयरक्राफ्ट मेंटेनेंस इंजीनियर्स जो पी आई में काम करते हैं उसमें ए थ्री ट्वेंटी पे भी काम करते हैं मैं काफी सालों से उनको जानता हूं तो इनकी बातें हमारी यू नो होती रहती है उन्हें वो सिर्फ एक ही बात बोलते हैं वो सिर्फ एक ही बात बोलते हैं विच यू नो विच मेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ सेंस एंड इट एंड यू नो इट एनेबल्स यू टू सॉर्ट टू टू टूगेदर उन्होंने ये बोला कि देखिये आप हमें स्पेयर पार्ट सप्लाई करेंगे तो हम जहाज को एयरवर्दी रख सकते हैं If you don't provide us with the parts, with the spare parts, हम क्या करें? ये कोई जुगाड़ वाला, ये जुगाड़ वाला इस काम में जुगाड़ नहीं चलता। That's right, बिल्कुल, बिल्कुल। यू ना आप आप चलते हुए जहाज को खड़ी कर दें, उससे सामान उतार के दूसरा जहाज को चालू करने के लिए आप उसका सामान सारा उसमें डाल दिया। बिल्कुल। You know, and कहते हैं हमने बहुत हम हम इतने emails हम भेजते हैं कि भाई इस चीज की जरूरत है ये कंपोनेंट्स की जरूरत है ये पार्ट्स की जरूरत है ये वो की जरूरत है कहते हैं मगर जब पार्ट्स हमें सप्लाई हमें मिलती नहीं है हमें सामान नहीं मिलता है काम करने के लिए तो हम क्या काम करें हम कैसे काम करें सही सही शाजी ये जो आपने ये बड़ा जबरदस्त चार्ट बनाया ये कॉन्वर्सेशन की ये इसको एक्सप्लेन करेंगे क्योंकि ये अभी हम दिखा रहे हैं इसको आई थिंक ये हसन तारी साहब ने बनाया था अच्छा जी बिल्कुल तो आप इसको इंटरप्रेट कर दीजिए जरा सो इनिशियली जो कराची एरिया कंट्रोल सेंटर है उसके जो स्टेटमेंट स्टार्ट होता है वो स्टार्ट होता है वेन द एयरक्राफ्ट इज फिफ्टीन नॉटिकल माइल्स फ्रॉम द एयरपोर्ट फ्रॉम टच डाउन बेसिकली एंड द एयरक्राफ्ट इज रिपोर्टेड टू बी एट फ्लाइट लेवल वन जीरो जीरो विच इज टेन थाउजेंड फीट विच इज वंस अगेन टू हाई अकॉर्डिंग टू द चार्ट ऑफ कराची इट शुड बी एट एट थाउजेंड फीट सो इनिशियली हम देखते हैं कि द अप्रोच स्टार्टेड टू हाई अब मसला ये है कि हमारे पास जो जिस पॉइंट से यकीन सबने ए टी सी कॉन्वर्सेशन तो सुनी ली होगी वो जो रिकॉर्डिंग जो बहुत ज्यादा पब्लिक हो चुकी है उसमें द प्रॉब्लम इज के फ्रॉम द बिगेनिंग ऑफ द वी डू नॉट हेयर एनी थिंग फ्रॉम द बिगेनिंग ऑफ द अप्रोच और बिगेनिंग ऑफ द डिसेंट बेसिकली वैन नवाब शाह पास करते हुए द एक इट्स डिसेंट सो वी डोंट नो इफ इट वॉज लेट ओवर देयर और नॉट और द ओनली पॉइंट वेर वी नो that something was going wrong was when they reported 5 miles out so the aircraft continues and then uh, they uh, the first uh, when atc told them to turn left heading 180 when they were on the approach path basically straight heading straight in for the runway and 180 means he was trying to turn them around so he said sir we are comfortable now we are out of 3500 3000 established ils 25 left that means that they the pilot said they were on the glide path but the graphs indicate otherwise basically the aircraft was too fast they were in an in a speed of x uh, around about 250 knots when the aircraft should have been under 200 knots uh, 180 or 160 knots and the altitude compared to basically previous a320 landings it was too high which we also established the atc continually tried uh, to tell them that they were too high but uh, the crew continued to tell them that they were fine so when then atc hesitantly i guess just said clear to land runway 25 left there was duniya mein ek standard operating procedure hai with the landing clearance you have to also give a wind check wind check means the winds that are blowing at that time that was not given but the thing is that live atc.net jahan se definitely feed uthai gayi hai sometimes it cuts out as well so there is a chance ke wo live atc.net ki feed ne nahi uthaya or there is a chance that the wind check was not given as part of pakistani sops about from 19 from the 1980s when a 747 did a belly landing in slamar so to prevent future accidents like that from happening pakistani atp ne uh, start saath hi mein they started giving calls of check gears down and locked as a way to alert the pilots or remind the pilots that the gears should be down and locked that was also not heard on the atc transcript 
and uh, the aircraft was also not handed off to Karachi Tower, basically the controller that handles all the departures and arrivals into and out of Karachi. So, a difference approach controller or Karachi Tower tower, tower controller in the air, the approach controller is actually inside a room with a screen in front of him and he's only monitoring dots that are moving and he has to control just by looking at those dots and obviously space it there. Tower and ground controller ki jaga airport mein hoti hai. So they are actually in the airport and they have a whole panoramic view of the airfield. So they could actually have seen the aircraft coming. So usually, agar koi star ki cheez hoti hai, the tower controller can inform the aircraft. Ke, for example, if its gear, gears are not down, tower controller ki responsibility hoti hai, that he always keeps an eye on it. So even in the UK, they pro- have uh, proper like binoculars and they have to monitor each and every flight going in and out. And that's the same case for every uh, airport in the world. So if it had been in with the tower, the tower could have noticed that maybe the landing gear, if the landing gear was not down, if the landing gear was not down, that it isn't down and he could have sent it for a go around. But the problem was that the uh, the aircraft was with the approach controller who was just monitoring a dot moving along his screen. But the tower controller could actually have seen the aircraft coming in. Physically, he could have seen the aircraft coming in. So, this is what he said. Please finish. So, when he sp- uh, told when he uh, said that he was going around and then he was coming back around uh, at this point the aircraft starts losing uh, altitude and speed that means something happened at this point either the engine started failing and at this point one of our photographers from plane spotters Pakistan actually took the picture of this aircraft that was flying like this now there are two key points to be no- to be noted here first under the engines, there was a black charring. Like the engine was completely worn out. That was the first indication of something going wrong. And secondly, uh, there is a drive mechanism called the ram air turbine. The ram air turbine deploys when electrical power to the aircraft is lost. And electrical power from the aircraft is actually gained from the engines of the aircraft. So something ha- must have happened to those engines or the AC buses which caused the ram air turbine to deploy. It's a small propeller. And it, uh, jab wo wind ke against move kar hai, it uh, rotates and generates electricity, provides vital electrical power to the aircraft. Right. So, event- so eventually the, the uh, aircraft starts losing altitude and speed. And they were uh, saying they were trying to maintain 2000. They didn't say they could maintain 2000. That means something was abnormal. Either the engines had completely failed or partially failed. They were providing partial thrust and they were somehow able to manage 2000 for a good, uh, I think that's two minutes, a good two minutes. That means the engines were working at the point or partially giving thrust. But then suddenly the aircraft lose speed. And he tried to maintain 2,000 feet, but he kept going down. And eventually, the very final call from the aircraft is Pakistan 8303, which is like the, the, a call that every pilot dreads. He, he does not want to make that call. But he had to make that call. And ATC confirmed you are carrying out a belly landing. So that means either the pilots must have informed uh, the approach controller that some the, that uh, the gear didn't extend, either uh, either that and the live ATC feed did not get it, or the tower controller must have seen that a jet he's touched the runway and he's gone around and they were, obviously there might have been sparks and everyone must have noticed that and he might have immediately called the, the approach controller that something had happened. So the first instinct for the approach controller was to ask him if it's a belly landing, so that he could prepare the emergency services to be on on the runway if something had gone wrong. But the last call was for a mayday and ATC said both runways available to land, but uh, unfortunately the aircraft could not make it back. Very tragic very, and very unfortunate, you know. So, Muin Saab, do you want to add something to the entire sequence of events that Shaji has uh, uh, dotted together? Mm. Mm. Well, uh, he said it, he's pretty much uh, given the whole uh, scenario of what has happened and that basically he came in too fast, too high. Right. And uh, he wanted to execute, even though he was instructed to carry out a second attempt at an approach. 
so that he can lose altitude and come down to the designated altitude. He insisted on, you know, he, that he will be able to manage this approach and, uh, you know, to get the plane down and that, you know, he's comfortable with it and it's all right. So, uh, you know, he carried out basically a rapid descent. He carried out a rapid end and in the ATC recordings, there was some alarm type of sound that was heard. Now, we are not sure exactly now, is that an overspeed warning, which could have been the result of his expedited descent, hmm. you know, to get the required altitude or if it was a landing gear warning that, you know, you have not extended your landing gears. We don't know, but an alarm did sound. So, you know, and in some cases, they all just pretty much sound alike. So, you know, we don't know that. So when he came down for that approach, by the time, the, by the time he crossed the runway threshold, he had already used up uh, about 3,000, 3,500 feet of runway already. Oh, and he was still too high. He was still too high and he was still too fast. He was still too high and too fast. And he... At that time, you know, he uh, he was not coming down because at the speed he was going, he was not getting that, you know, he was not able to, you know, come any further, any lower. So at that point, it's possible that he realized that, you know, I won't be able to carry out this landing at this speed and how far I have come because he's going to eventually run out of runway. Right. And he presses the takeoff go around button and in that situation, you raise the flaps. Mm -hmm. And also, you also, you know, uh, you, once you raise the flaps, then you get less, uh, you get less lift. Right. So right. when you press the toga button and you raise the flaps, you get less lift. And that is the point where the aircraft sank. It right. sank and then the engines hit the runway. You know, they hit right. the runway and toga takes several seconds to kick in. It does, it's not immediate for the engines, idling engines, the engines were idling at this point, but he was still going very fast down the runway, you know, at, uh, probably at zero degrees. He wasn't angled or anything like that. But by the time that it took the engines to spool up the time that the, whatever number of seconds it takes to spool. During that time, the plane lost height, it lost lift. And it came down and it hit the engines. And by the time it hit the engines, they at that time managed to spool up and get the power to lift him off again, you know, to lift him off the runway and get him up again. And uh, they managed to get him up to 3,000 feet. But slowly and gradually, because of the loss of those oils and all those other, you know, crucial fluids that are required and whatever components that are required to keep the engine on, they gradually, step by step, things started failing, one by one, one by one. And he was, uh, the, probably the power also went down. He lost power in the engines. Planes started slowly coming down, coming down, coming down. And uh, he had to make that 360 degree turn to come mm -hmm. back the mm -hmm. airfield. And by that time, based on the charts we have seen, he appeared to have been coming down fairly smoothly, but in the last part of the graph, you can see that he slightly, the graph, it angles upwards a little bit, which probably means that he tried to pull the nose up at the last possible minute. He tried to pull the nose up a little bit. And because of that, the plane further lost height because it got dragged. Dragging, he, you know, the plane, the nose went up, and that is what caused it to pancake and sink into the ground. Right. You know, right. Probably had maintained that 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 descent, that uh, gradual descent he was coming down on, had he kept it that way, and maybe had the nose not pitched up, probably might have made it beyond those houses, and probably barely just uh, past the airport perimeter fence. Right, right, right. So uh, thank you so much. This is a very interesting, uh, un un unfortunately, but uh, you know, it's a very detailed, uh, uh, you know, low down and recap of uh, the events. But uh, my last question, we only have a minute left. Mohin sahab, tell us that the inquiry committee, hai, are you satisfied with the way it's been constituted or does it, or should it have more uh, people uh, on the on on board. 
I'm really, you know, I'm really not sure. But uh, as uh, as long as uh, Airbus and hopefully the NTSB and the uh, foreign in inquiry people who are coming into it are involved, <coughs> hopefully that there should uh, everything should be uh, and based on some preliminary reports we've also read. They're not official and whatnot. Uh, hopefully, they should basically, uh, you know, give uh, an accurate and factual account of what happened. And again, once again, until we hear the transcript of the CVR, we really do not know what happened inside that cockpit. We really don't know. We have to hear that. But also, but like I said, there were whatever could have gone wrong went wrong. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, you know, and just everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, you know, with the air traffic control. I mean, based on what we have read and what we have seen and heard, the air traffic, it seems that there is, a, the air traffic control has a bit of explaining to do themselves. Yes. Why was the, where was the tower? Tower kidder tha? He was talking to approach control. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? So, you know, I just came off the top of my head. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, but of course, then how were they to know that this plane is coming in wheels up at the worst possible time? That there was, you know, and because of the lockdown and these limited flights, the airports being partially closed. Was skeleton staff operate for right. and Aki Aka Duka departure who so there was not really anyone on duty at that time. And obviously, whoever was the last thing they were probably expecting was this something like this to happen, right? So, but usually in this circumstance, at this stage of, of the flight, it is the tower who needs to be speaking Bilkul. to the pilot and directing him and asking him the questions and all that, not the approach control. Very important point, very important point. And uh, thank you so much, Shaji, and thank you, Muin Saab, for your time. Uh, those who are uh, keen to know what happened on that fateful and tragic Friday will learn a lot. And I hope that we have a fair and impartial inquiry and justice is done. And those who are responsible for oversight are also punished. Uh, Khudafis.